For our special guest this evening, who just flew in this afternoon, Joseph Pierce, writer in residence, editor of the Ignatius Press critical editions of classic world literature, editor of the St. Austin Review of Culture and Christianity, and author of a whole lot of books. <laughs> Three of which I happen to have right here. He happens to have more of them, in case you want to buy them. But more importantly, these are all books about Shakespeare. Through Shakespeare's eyes, seeing the Catholic presence in the plays, the quest for Shakespeare, the Bard of Avon and the Church of Rome, and most recently, hot off the press, Shakespeare on love, seeing the Catholic presence in Romeo and Juliet. So we have, in my estimation, the best person in the country, even from across the pond, <laughs> to chat with us tonight and um, engage us in this dialogue about Catholicism and Shakespeare. Some biographers of Shakespeare try to show that Shakespeare was, must have been a, a good 21st century um, atheist by the fact that he never attended his local Anglican church. And they poured through the, the parish records of St. George's Parish Church in Southwark, and they cannot find any record of Shakespeare ever attending. This therefore proves that he was an atheist like us. <laughs> <laughs> However, the logic, of course, is that Shakespeare's father was fine for his refusal to attend Anglican Church. His mother came from a, the Arden family, the whole family of which were notorious for refusing to attend the Anglican Church. In 1606, again, uh, during the time Shakespeare's writing his plays, his daughter Susanna is fined for not attending Anglican Church. So, of course, the logical uh, conclusion one should draw is that Shakespeare did not attend the Anglican Church for the same reason that his father and mother didn't, and for the same reason that his daughter didn't, because he was a Catholic who refused in principle, in principle to attend the Anglican Church. But perhaps the most compelling evidence from his life is the fact he bought the Blackfriars Gate Gatehouse in London shortly before leaving London at the end of uh, his uh, playwriting days in about 1613. The Gatehouse remained in Catholic hands. We know this from the property deeds right through Shakespeare's time as Shakespeare purchased it. But Shakespeare, and it, not only that, it was a, a known hub of Catholic activity in London, with secret, ad, secret passageways uh, down to the River Thames, so the priests could make quick getaways. We know the priests stayed there, we know that the house was raided. Shakespeare buys this particular house. Not only does he buy this particular house, he insists that the person who was the tenant of the house, someone called John Robinson, should continue to live there after he purchased it. In other words, it's going to be used for the same purposes after he purchased it as it was being used before. And uh, John Robinson's brother, in the same year that Shakespeare bought that house, uh, went to Rome to study for the priesthood at the English College. Um, and John Robinson himself was the only one of Shakespeare's friends to be present during Shakespeare's final illness. Um, uh, so, obviously a close friend. So Shakespeare basically, the only house he buys in London, the only other house we know he bought was the second largest house of Stratford upon Avon for his own family. But the only other house he bought was this notorious Catholic den of iniquity. <laughs> the fact that I'm, I'm a firm believer in the Catholic Shakespeare and the fact that I've written books on the Catholic Shakespeare does not mean that I endorse every other book that claims to be proven that Shakespeare is a Catholic. Um, I think that some approaches, like, this actually alludes to this plucking one line here, one line there. You know, it doesn't prove anything if you pluck one line. And I actually gave an example uh, over lunch of the school motto. I give, I give a talk about my own personal conversion story. And I was actually led astray by Shakespeare um, in the sense that the school motto of my high school, uh, the school motto of my high school in England was, it's some great big letters above the stage, so imagine behind here. This above all, to thine own self be true, William Shakespeare. And I thought, great, well, that's, that's, what, uh, that's what Shakespeare believes, that's what I believe. But of course, that line plucked out of context, it's not, it's not said by William Shakespeare, it is said by William Shakespeare, and it's not said by William Shakespeare. It's said by William Shakespeare because Shakespeare wrote it, but he put it in the mouth of Polonius. And Polonius is a blithering idiot, and a, <laughs> sm yeah, and a spy who eventually, because of that advice he gives to his son, gets his son killed, gets himself killed, and obliges to a man. I mean, that's what Shakespeare's saying, that philosophy needs to <laughs>